No, my name is Donnie Caborn Rivers. I'm the founder of a nonprofit organization called I Am My Community Inc. INC, that's in the Bronx. We promote public safety through mental health awareness classes, parenthood classes. We also got an anti-violence unit, which means that when somebody gets shot, killed, harmed, or injured in our community, we take it upon ourselves. We have nothing to do with the police, find out who did what to who and why. And then we try to bring both sides together so that it don't be no type of retaliations and people don't keep on continue shooting and killing and fighting and causing a whole bunch of ruckus in the community. And, uh, you know, anybody want to contact me is the same thing on, you know, my email is uh, I am my community, INC at Gmail on uh, Facebook, uh, Kborn Rivers, K-B-O-R-N, R-I-V-E-R-S on Instagram, same thing. If you go to, uh, I got a YouTube page too, and that's under I Am My Community, INC, Inc. So, you know, those are my contacts. Today I want to get on to uh, speak about the NYPD. And, you know, speak about the fact that there's so much confusion going on all around the world with the COVID. And then we got the, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter situation with the police and, uh, and, and all of that. And then you got, you know, I see other places, police is really trying to, you know, you got some police stepping up and trying to change and trying to, you know, be a part of the community. But in New York City, I see absolutely nothing. You know, we have the most disrespectful police got to be in America. It's like they're a gang that come outside with no type of education, no type of law degree. I mean, they don't know nothing about law. They don't even know their own codes. And it's like a bunch of knuckleheads who just threw on blue suits and they just gave them a guns, guns and they just running around. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're not really helping nobody because nobody don't even communicate with you because they don't know how to speak to people. That's one. You know, they, should, they, they need to retrain all of them. They need to go to etiquette school. They need to have a, 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 a level of certain respect like they have in the army where you got to respect people. Because people are not gonna go to you and you you can't, you know, and, and, and I just go through this, uh, I'm gonna give you an example. Last night, I'm walking down Midtown. I'm on like uh exactly on 44th and 10th Avenue, walking out of my business. I see a young girl, she must have been about 19 years old. She's walking down the block, she looked she was about 19. She, I, I I assumed that she was between 18, 19, 18 to 20, but then she told me she was 19, so I was right on point, you know what I'm saying? My uh or something of her age was right on point. She was 19, she had a blanket on, nice looking young girl. She had a blanket on, some slippers, and all some jeans, a shirt. You know, it's pretty cold last night. And as soon as I, she seen me, she was like, she showed me her wrist. And she said, look at my wrist, look at my wrist. Uh, I'm about to kill myself if you don't call an ambulance for me. Now I'm pretty sure this girl walking down, coming from 42nd Street, she done walked by a lot of people who ignored her. Me being me, automatically, I said, don't even worry, but I'm gonna call you the ambulance. I'm calling ambulance you right now. Don't go in the well. She was like, if no somebody don't call an ambulance, I'm gonna kill myself. So I'm like, you ain't gotta do all that. Just you know, wait right here. I'm gonna call an ambulance. I call an ambulance. The ambulance asked me one thousand questions. I'm telling them that it ain't me. It's somebody that's standing right here. You know, stop all the questions. Get over here, and this is a minor. Get over here and find out what's going on. Now before the ambulance get there, so the ambulance said that you know. They'll be there in a couple of minutes. Another guy got on, nice, nice young dude. He got on, spoke nice on the, uh, the dispatcher for the fire department. Nice young dude, spoke nice. He uh, he said they're on their way. Before they got there, and two minutes later, nine cops showed up. So they start putting on gloves and all this stuff. I'm like, hey, what y'all doing, man? I said, first of all, who called y'all? Oh, when they call the ambulance, we gotta come. I said, well, y'all should have came with the ambulance. You know what I'm saying? Don't come before the ambulance because y'all started winning her. And then as soon as she seen them and they put on gloves, she was like, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. And she started walking off. They started walking behind her, starting to put. I said, Yo, don't put your hands on her. Because first of all, she's not under arrest. She didn't commit no crime. Oh, you can't, or uh, 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 the, the lady gonna ask me, who am I? I'm the person that called the ambulance. You ain't helping. How you mean I'm not helping and she's in the back of an ambulance? You know, like, like, what are you talking about? So I, you know, I'm still speaking and she's, you know, getting all, she getting all uptight. So, I'm like, so I, I turns around, I tell the other cop, 
I said, this lady need to be medicated, not incarcerated. One of them goes, oh, no, nah, we didn't come to incarcerate nobody. I'm like, she did. She want to incarcerate her and acting like she want to incarcerate me. What's all the gloves? And why she keep putting her hands on her? You know what I'm saying? And the, and the little girl was getting upset. Like, I'm not going in there. I'm not going there. I'm like, sister, you do need to go in the ambulance. You know what I'm saying? You do need to go in the ambulance. You know, security that all. Uh, they're going to bring her down to the hospital, give us some help and stuff like that, that she wasn't going to get incarcerated. But the police was there trying to egg her on already seeing that she already going through stuff. She already yelling and screaming. She got to cut herself. This ain't the time for you to be over here chastising her, asking her why she yelling and calm down and let the professionals come over here. That's why I call the ambulance. They don't know what to do with her, you know? And, that's, and they knew exactly, you know, they took her. Thank God they came, you know, but the police don't help the situation, you know? And like I told them, I said, you supposed to be here to de-escalate the situation. As soon as you showed up, you escalate the whole situation because you got her uptight, you got me uptight. And y'all supposed to came here and I supposed to be like, oh yeah, well, they go help. Whew. Now I can go about my business because you know, it's, it's almost 12.30, the train's gonna stop running. You know, now I got a problem getting back to the Bronx, you know, but I, I don't mind having that problem to wait and save somebody's life. Cause I'm not gonna walk by her and watch her go up the block. You know, you know, and it didn't look like, you know, she was joking around because she already done showed me her arm. So when she walked up to me, she had like a little five, six cuts on her wrist. You know, come on, that's dangerous right there. But she got in the ambulance and she want to help. You know, as soon as like the lady came and she remembered the little things that I was talk talking to, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a youth work. I work with you. So when the lady came trying to stir it up, the police, and she was like, oh, you got to get out of here. She was like, he don't got to get out of nowhere. You know, I'm going, I'm here. He, he's making me feel comfortable. He's a youth worker. You know, you making me feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like, you can't come up to somebody that's having a mental breakdown with all of your regular police scene, like somebody got shot, or this is not a crime scene. You know, everybody, you know, all police should take up some type of thing to deal with the all people that's mentally ill because they can't deal with people that's, that, that's not mentally ill. So how can you deal with somebody that's mentally ill? You 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 coming over here, you aggressive, you talking to them like they're in a stable mind, and they're not. You know, that's why most of the people that do call the police when their family have a mental breakdown or something, they be scared. They be like, nah, I don't want to call the police. The first, yo, don't hurt them. Don't hurt them. They asking me, do she got a weapon? Like, where are you going at with this? That's why I asked myself, where you going at with this, man? Where you going at with this? That's irrelevant and do she have the weapons? Evidently she had to have something that she cut her wrist. But is she a threat with a weapon trying to hurt somebody like you trying to insinuate, you know? And who mentioned weapon? I called the ambulance. I said, it's a girl out here, her wrist is bleeding. She's suicidal. Where did you get weapon from? You know, you're trying to stir something up and you know, like, like what you gonna do? You gonna go wrestle her to the floor and see what she cut herself with? Like, you know, like, like where are you going at with this? You know, you know, if they hear that it's somebody that's mentally ill, the police should not be the first one on the scene. They should not be there. And if they do be there, there should be somebody in there that know how to, that has some type of degree with mental health. So when they get on the scene, they could be the ones who go to the scene because they know how to go about that. You see, about a couple of years ago, when uh, a guy was in Brooklyn and he was standing on the on the uh on the top of the store ledge. You stand on top of the store ledge, on the canopy, top of the store. But you know, it was small. It was like, on, it looked like it's about like this, this, the first floor. But it was a heavy guy. He probably wore about like 200 and something pounds. Hispanic guy. His mother called the police. She called the ambulance, not the police, which she should have had. He's standing up there on the ledge. You know what I'm saying? He had, I think he had no clothes on and all that. You know, he looked like he was about like 40 years old. She said that he'd be on medication. He hasn't been taking his medication for a couple of days. He needs some help. The fire department getting the right, you know, they're getting their stuff right. You know, they're gonna come out with the air bed and all that just in case he fall down. The ambulance is there. They getting ready so they can try to talk him to come down. The police take the whole scene into their hand and they feel that the wise thing that they should do, the smart thing that they should do with a man that's up on the first floor ledge 
is the stun gun him. So they stun gun him from down thing. He fell down, broke his neck and died. Broke his neck and died. You know, like what type of genius is gonna say that the way we gonna get him down, we gonna stun gun him down and let him fall out on the concrete and then that's how we helping him. You know, it's like they come through and you know, you dealing with civilians, you know, that's what you got trained for. You didn't get, you have no training with dealing with people that's mentally ill. So why are you here the first one on the scene? I just don't get it. You know, when you go in every precinct inside New York, every precinct in the United States should have a little, just like they got the robbery unit, they got this uh, sex crime unit. They got the sex trafficking unit. They got the homicide unit. They should have a mental health unit in every precinct. So soon as somebody come in there, if they already know that they heard or they had past mental health problems, whatever, you go over there and go speak to these people. Let them get evaluated right at the precinct so that you should know that you can know from right there is do this person need to be incarcerated? Or do this person need to be medicated? Because don't forget, when they take the people that's locked up on the street and they bring them to Rikers Island, they're not getting medicated. So you go in there, and by the time you put down to go to sick call, it'd be about three weeks before you get a sick call. Three weeks to like a month. So you got three weeks to not a month that you didn't take your medication. The reason why you here is because you didn't take your medication. So now you in here, you're not taking your medication. And then you ain't really getting no time to let you back out in the street, but nothing never happened. You never got no help the whole time you sat there. But they knew that you got arrested because you did something because you had a mental health illness. But nobody's requiring why you in here that you get help. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like a revolving door. So you so like you really sent somebody up, you're taking them in here just because so, you know they're coming back because they didn't get no hope in the first place. So they're gonna go right back on the street the same exact way they left. And uh, nine out of ten times, they're gonna get back into another situation because they did not get no help. So it's like, you know, so much that's not being done. You know, you got the mayor's wife, she uh they gave her almost a billion dollars for Thrive NYC. Where's Thrive NYC? Thrive NYC has enough money, a big enough budget that they should have their own Thrive NYC in every precinct. You got 900 and something million dollars, you know, that should be enough to open up all uh, in every precinct and you a part of the city too. All you really gotta do is pay the workers. You know, it's like so much outreach need to be done, man. And especially when you come down to mental health illness, you know, so much outreach and it's not, and it's it like nobody's doing it because I'll be outside, you know, and I got my certificates from uh, mental health, first aid with youth, with adolescents and with adults. And I continue, continuously study on mental health illness, mental health education, you know, mental health awareness, you know, and I, I, because I, it's, it's an everyday thing. You know, I deal with people, I'm outside every day. We all outside every day. And a lot of people, we walk by is dealing with a mental health illness. It could be from anxiety. They may be schizophrenic. They may be, uh, they may like to eat too much. They may like to eat too little. You may like to start fires and be a pyromaniac. You may be just feeling so much that we think you're a thief, but you're really not a thief. You're a kleptomaniac, you know? You have a problem, you have a mental problem. You just walk around putting things in your pocket. You're not a thief, you're not a crook, you're not a robber. It's, it's different, you know? A crook and a robber going out here because they robbing because they ain't got it, or they rob because, you know, they want to come up. You just doing it because you're a kleptomaniac, you have a mental problem. You can have $20 million, you can have $20,000 in your pocket, and you'll go in the store and steal something that costs $5. It's not because you're stealing it and the people be like, oh man, he's stealing that. He's stealing that man. He's mad stupid. He's stupid. Yo, he didn't. No. He's a kleptomaniac. He has a mental problem. But we'll call him a thief. Man, dude's a thief, man. He got sticky fingers, man. 
He walk by, he can't stop touching. Everywhere he goes, he steals some. Look, he that's my, give me my pen. He got your pen in his pocket. You know, he he's not doing it intentionally. He's a kleptomaniac, but he don't even know it because we don't go out and try to see what's the problem with our kids in the majority of times in the black and brown communities. You know, when our kids have a problem, we sugarcoat it. Like I always say, oh, uh, we gonna give him a name. Oh, they go little, if he black, his name is Jimmy. We gonna call him Crazy Jimmy from now on. Her name is Susie, oh, they go Crazy Susie. If they Latin, oh, they go uh, loco. Oh, they go loca. And that's gonna be your name. And everybody gonna go to go loco, man. They go loco, they go loca. All your life they call you loco and loca, but nobody never went and seek no help for you. And then as soon as you do something off the charts, people be like, man, I can't believe they did that. Yo, I can't believe you've been calling them loco and loca and crazy Jimmy his whole life since he was four years old. But nobody in school, none of his counselors, none of his parents, Nobody in his family never went and got this man a mental evaluation, but y'all just threw a sugar-coated name on him. And that been his name for all his life. And now it's a nickname run around the street. He a grown man, he's still calling him Crazy Jimmy and Loco and Loka. You know, so many things going on, man, you know, that we need to uh, we need to reach out. And I think that uh, the police most definitely, I'm not gonna say that like everybody say, get rid of the police. No, I don't get rid of the police because somebody rob your house you not calling the crew. You know, I'm not calling you. You know what I'm saying? What I'm calling you for? You know, you're going to call a whole bunch of dudes. They're going to go beat up somebody. You ain't getting your stuff back. You know, the police got their job. They're going to come there. They're going to be dusting fingerprints. There's a good chance that they may go down to Harry's pawn shop and find your stuff. But they're going to do a whole investigation. Somebody hit an old lady in the head. She don't want you to go and hit somebody else back in the head. Nah, she wants some justice. She want, she want that dude to be took care of, not by physical. She want to be took care of by the law to prevent him from hitting another elderly person in the head. You know what I'm saying? By us going and somebody going to beat him up, that's not going to get it. So the police are needed. But they really need to be retrained. Really need to be retrained. And, and the first step need to be they need to know how to talk to people. People is grown people. You know, you're a grown adult. I do not work for you and you are not my parent. So, you know, I mean, so we give you the authority to think that you could just come out and just talk to a double adult any old way because you got a blue suit on. You could just jump out your car, be like, hey, everybody get there, get out the way, yo, move you. Get over here, push the people, grandmothers and like, what is, yo, what's, what's wrong with you? Like, where do you come from? What type of parents, who raised you? You know, like who raised you? You jump out the car like you a thug. The first thing to do when the police get out the car, the first thing they do is putting on leather gloves. So you're already looking like you came here for an altercation. Now we in a day or time where a lot of people in this era, they can't rationalize the difference between police and the civilian. So they automatically is uptight. Now you got a big fight going on and the police in a fight and it's a shooting going on, police got shot, somebody got shot, you like, man, what happened? This guy came out the car, they don't never put this in the newspaper, jumped out the car like he was Charles Bronson or something, ran over here, started choking this guy, his mother came downstairs and said, that's my son, we live in this building. He pushed up and then all hell hit the fan. None of that gonna be, they don't never mention that part. All they, when they come to court, oh, it's a disorderly conduct. And then when the people try to say they part, they 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 get them out because they don't charge them with a charge. So they be like, well, uh, whatever they was arrested for, well, you got a possession of marijuana. They never mentioned the whole big fight that you just had the police and they threw your mother on the floor and all that because they just sweeping under the rug. I'm not going to charge you. I took it as a loss. You take it as a loss. We just had a fight. That's it. And they let it go. And it's, it's a continuous thing that they've been doing for decades. And it's not making it. It's not making it, you know? It's not making it. People don't, people tired, you know, and, and it's bad enough, you know, you got unemployment at 10.1 million. People ain't got a job. You got a pandemic going on. People don't know when they're gonna get their next meal, you know? 
And then, you know, just try to practice being nice to each other, man. And, you know, we all going to try to practice being nice. The police got to do it, too. You got to do it, too. You got to learn to get along with the public. If you can't get along with the public, then you need to find you a new job, man. Honestly speaking, you need to go ahead and find a new job. You know, because we was young, you know, the police, we knew the neighborhood police. The couple of cops who come play basketball, a couple of cops that, you know, come around the summertime, play stickball with the older dudes. You know, you knew. You go to the pool, to the pool, they already knew you. Don't come in here with that this week. You know, you want to get in next week, come through. Yo, man, you get in free next week? Yeah, if you don't, you don't come in here. And when we say get out the board at 5 o'clock, all y'all get out, but you knew exactly who to go to. You, you come in to get on the train, you know exactly, man, I need to get on the train, man, I ain't got no money today. You know exactly you look for, y'all, yo, yo, man, get on the train. Police ask you, uh, I'm gonna ask you a couple of math questions. You know, you're young. If you can answer these math questions, you get on the train. They ask you the math questions, you answer them joints, get on the train. I see old ladies going to the police nowadays. Excuse me, sir, do you think that uh, you get me on the train, I, you know, I don't got the money, they say, oh, I can't swipe you on. Knowing you got a card in your pocket that you can swipe this lady on, or you can ask the the uh, the, the token booth lady, because she already asked the token booth lady, but the token booth lady don't want to tell her, yeah, and then you arrest her. So the token booth lady says, it's all right with me, but just go ask the police. Here you go. Why would she send the person over there if you didn't have the authority to say yes or no? And she's in the back of it. Don't you know, don't you think she know her job and know, you know what I'm saying, what she can do and what she can't do? You know, so, and, and they're standing right there. Now they, now they put the lady in a, in, in a suicide mission. Well, I can't swipe you. The lady said that she could go. The police saying that he can't swipe us, so, AKA, he's going to lock you up or give you a summons. So now she don't know what to do. Stand there, stand there. Next thing you know, you got an old lady walking down the block five, six blocks, you don't know what could happen to her. She could rob, anything could happen to her. Nighttime, you know what I'm saying? It's out the kindness of your heart and the safety of you being a cop. And you know that safety is first and you took an oath to protect people. And that right now I'm using my common sense to say, I don't think this is a good time at night for this elderly lady or this young kid to be walking down this block. And I work, I work around here. I know the robbery rate. I know the, the shooting rate. I know the gang rate because I work here. Yeah, get on the train, man. Most definitely get on the train. Supposed to be trying to protect people, man. You know, you over here trying to secure the MTA. You know, that's not your job. Your job is that you took an oath to protect people, not property. You know? And that's what they do. They took the oath to protect people, but their job is when they come out, all they worry about is property. You can see two people, and the reason why I say that, you can see a whole block of people fighting. People getting hit in the head with bottles, all that. The police will come and say, y'all group of people go this way. Y'all group of people go that way. No problem. People head bleeding, this and that, third, they walking down the block, threatening each other. They go their way. There's nobody want to get locked up. Now go stand in front of your own building where you've been paying $1,500 a month for, for the last 10 years. And you came outside just to get a little fresh air for a minute. Hot summer day, you step outside, get a little fresh air. You standing on your stoop where you pay fifteen hundred dollars a month. At, you only been there for two minutes. Here go the police. Hey y'all, you ain't no standing there. Hold on, bro. I live here. Oh, I don't care. You still can't stand there. What you mean I can't stand here? I live here. I pay fifteen hundred dollars a month here. Oh, they getting out the car, putting on gloves. Oh, you got ID. What do I need ID for now? And they want to give you a summons for laudering. How can I be laudering into my building? I pay $1,500 for it. How much? And your ID say the building. And they still give you a summons. And then when you go to court, of course the judge throw it out when, once they see that your ID got the. But why I got to go through getting harassed though? And they do it continuously. Continuously. So you can see what the uproar and the, and the, and the fight and the argument and the hate be towards the police is always something. You know, I say this too. Now, I done lived in Little Italy. I done, I done lived all over the Bronx. I done lived in Mars Park. I go home, 
Mars Park, we're home in Little Italy. The guys be out there, Italian guys over here, the Albanians. They be in front of their little bars all night. I mean, literally. You know, older guys, though, you know, they got their little table out there. They ain't bothering nobody. They drinking their little egg clairs, whatever, their little soda pops, espressos, you know, and they playing dominoes. They playing their little cards, but they are, they out there all night. And it's just called, you know, a little gathering. Okay, they're gathering, they're cooling out. Ain't no trouble starting. Now, let go to a black and brown community and let four people just be sitting at a table. Mind their business. They're playing spades. No problem at all. Nobody's getting loud. No problem. Police coming up. Police up. Oh, you know y'all can't be there right there. Y'all blocking the sidewalk and all that. All right, well, we're going to move to the side where we at over here. Well, y'all laudering. I'm going to give y'all a ticket for laudering if I drive around the block and come back and y'all still here. Why wouldn't you leave them people alone? The people's not bothering nobody. You know what I'm saying? Let them be in peace. Why are you going to put them back out in the mix of the jungle? Move, remove them for where they at safe. And just put them in the jungle with all the other stuff and all. You know, like, you got to be able to protect people, man. They're doing a bad job, man. Terrible job, man. You know, and, and I thought that I felt like that when I used to be in the street and getting in trouble. So I used to be like, man, you know, well, probably I feel like that because I'm out here doing things wrong. So that's their job. So they're going to be on me. But now I see that I don't be doing nothing wrong. And I'm on the outside looking in. And them dudes is, man, listen, you still doing the same thing. I'm watching you do the same thing to people that you do to hardcore criminals, man. And you running up on innocent people and people that got jobs and you, it is no different the way that you treat them. None. You walk up on a gang banger and you talk to him some type of way and this and that and third, you know this dude done this, that and, and shoot guns and all that. And then you'll walk up on a lady coming out of church and you'll talk to her and come at her with the same aggressiveness, the same aggressiveness and the same thing where you're supposed to be humbled down a little bit now because the same threat ain't there. You know what I'm saying? The same threat ain't there. So you're supposed to be a little more humble now. You still up in there. You know, I don't know if they got, they got a point that they trying to prove. If they trying to be tougher than the people in the street. If they trying to be tougher than the gangs. I don't know what they trying to prove, but that's not the way to go about it, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, like they say, it takes two to tangle. You know, if you're going to be the wiser one, man, you, then you got to play that role all the way. I come outside. Don't you think that I, people be coming at me some type of way here and there? I'm human. I know how to go about that now. You know, back in the days, it was a different story. Nowadays, it takes a lot for somebody to pull me out my character because I already know you trying to pull me out my character. So I, already, I know what I got to do. I'm more focused. So here goes somebody right here, and I'm, and I'm more focused for free. Here goes somebody that took an oath and getting a paycheck, and you can adapt and treat people like civilized people. And you know, I see if they give you a reason to step out of line, but people be really be trying to be nice and nice and nice to the police, man. And they make it their business to be dirty and nasty and disrespectful to people, and it's wrong. You know, I posted a, a video a couple of days ago of a guy that was on the train and he didn't have his mask on. And him and the whole train was arguing, you know, and, and he had his facts, they had their facts. Neither one of them is scientists. Ain't nobody no scientists, you know. The Dr. Fuki dude don't even be knowing what he's talking about. He be contradicting himself. So I know y'all guys right here, y'all most definitely don't know what y'all talking about. But they had a good little argument going on, no, no good debate. Here go the police, jump on the train. Now it's one guy arguing against 30 people. They threatening him. He's not threatening them. The police come take him off the train. Now, instead of they say, we taking you off for your own safety, I could have respect that. We taking you off for your own safety, man, because you, you know, you're arguing with the whole train. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we know you may not get physical, but that don't mean that somebody else may not get physical. And if one of them get physical, there's a good chance that at least out of this 30, 15 of them going to be on you, man, because you in here talking a good one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And he was talking the truth. So, you know, a lot of times the truth hurt. You know, so uh, the police come. Here go again. Instead of de-escalating the situation, they escalate the situation. They take him off the train. So he asked them the whole time. Why, why y'all taking me off the train? Oh, so, so, so he said, all right, so y'all gonna take me on the train, take the other people off too that I was arguing with. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Now I see again, if they told him he got to wait for the next train, they tells him, you got to leave the train station. He in Bushwick, Brooklyn now. He, they was on the train like they came for a while. He's like, you got to get off the train. Like, man, I, I'm not, why I got to get off the train? Oh, I got to leave the train station? That train already left. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I, I already paid to get on the train. Well, you got to go down there and pay again. And he couldn't understand. He's like, yo, wait, why? All right, you throw, why am I getting thrown off the train? Disorderly conduct. You was all, you, you, disorderly conduct. How can it be disorderly conduct and there's no witnesses? Because he's the only one you took off the train. So that's a lie. You don't know no law. You don't know no codes. Because in order for you to charge him with disorderly conduct, you got to take one of them people off the train to be a witness and say that it was a, he did something. You wasn't even there. You just came on the train. So, and it's on video. So you don't know what happened. So there ain't no disorderly conduct. The only disorderly conduct is you removing them from the train and violating his civil rights. Now, they're taking them off the train and he, he keep turning around. He's like, yo, why do I gotta get off the train? I gotta get off the train. Now I gotta leave the train station. These dudes is gone. They train already left. Even if you thought he was a threat, that threat is over. That train is gone, man. That train, by the time y'all don't talk to him, that train is in Broadway Junction somewhere. You know, they still made him leave the train. At least 10 times, you can see the video I posted, at least 10 times this guy, it was about four, it was four cops. At least 10 times he asked them, can I get your badge number? Can I get your badge number? You gotta leave the train station, you gotta leave the train station. Can I please get your badge number? They never gave him a badge number, threw him off the train. So he had to end up walking down to the next train, I, I guess, cause he took the video off after that. But he had no choice but to walk down to the next train station. Cause anything, any, the whole time they act like they wanted to beat him up. If you see the video, you're gonna be like, why is they coming at him like that? They wanted to beat him up. They didn't know what was going on, but to make up a false charge on him, this early conduct, you ain't got no witnesses. They, and don't forget, they never spoke to nobody. It ain't like they went and, you know, and, and spoke to the people on the train, like, yo, what happened? And got their side, so now we come to the conclusion that it was a disorderly conduct. No, you just came on the train and removed him as soon as you seen a little of this, and then you you don't know what happened. You know, these dudes is like, so you just was gonna lie on him. And good thing he had his video on, you know, but he never got their badge number. They never gave it to him. You know, and I, I and I always thought, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. But if somebody on, you know, that's online, you know, you get uh hit us in the comment box and let me know if I'm wrong or not. But I thought that if you ask the police for their badge number that they have to give it to you. That's what I always thought. Because what you got to hide? If you ain't doing nothing, and I'm asking you for your badge number, I'm a civilian, and you don't want to give me your badge number, that's the same thing you come to me and ask me for my ID. And I don't want to give you my ID. What you going to do? You going to arrest me. So why, how could you refuse to give me your ID? You may not even be a cop. You may be a robber. I don't know who you are. There's a whole bunch of people running around New York City with guns. And you just happen to be one of them with a gun. Could I see some type of identification that's ID you as a police? Could I see your badge number? Let me know who you are. It's a problem. They won't give it to you. Now, either you planning on doing something or you hiding something, but I always thought that it was all, uh, if you request the police badge number that they have to give it to you. You know, I could be wrong, but unless they change the rules, you know, just so much going on, man. And then they put them, you know, and then and then it's not like, it's like you can't avoid them because you go in the community and there's 500 cops. But it's 500 cops, but people still getting shot, people still getting beat up, People still getting robbed, but the police are on every corner in, in vans. And it's cameras, police cameras that say NYPD on every corner. So what y'all just sitting in the van eating donuts? Because you damn soon ain't doing no job. As soon as something happens, say something happened in the projects, they put the van out there and they stay out there for weeks. But the crime do not go down in that area. They come out sometime with them all, uh, with the sky things, and they be all the way up in the sky, 
and they can see you all around and they be in the in the booths and they still be crime in that community. So that ain't working, man. They gotta start providing for the people, start opening up some trade schools so people can start getting some skills, some plumbing skills, some uh, electricians, uh, become electrician again, start getting a welding classes in, you know, they, they, they cooking classes. They took all of those out to schools. You know, there's no more of them courses in the schools and all that. They don't provide it for in the community. You know, so it's a lack of jobs. It's more police than anything. It's more police than residents. And then another thing is that the police are supposed to be just like the politicians. The police and the politicians are supposed to be from your community. None of these cops, I've been living in the Bronx for 52 years, man. Don't tell me that you live in this community, bro, please. Do not, don't, don't even do it to me, man. None of them cops don't live in our community. None of them cops ain't from our community. They come from Long Island, New Jersey. So of course you don't relate to us. Of course you don't have empathy for us because you're not out here. You're not out here. So that's the first thing you need to do in the NYPD before you start even dreaming about correcting anything, start making the police to people from around the community like it's supposed to be. Going back to the politicians. The politicians can't do nothing for us because they're not from our community. They don't know us. You know, and, and I asked them this a year ago. I said, every politician from the Bronx, I challenge you this. Tell me what community you live in. And I'm gonna ask somebody around that community because I know I've been living in the Bronx all my life, 52 and a half years. What block do you live on? What community, you just tell me the section you live around. And I'm gonna know a couple of people in that section and I'm gonna ask them, do they see you or do they ever see you around there? And they're gonna say no. They're gonna be like, nah, man, never see that. That dude ain't from around here. So there's a lot of things that they need to change and correct before things can change and get corrected. You know? One of them is the police. They need to know, they need to re get retrained and they need to be officers from our community. And the politicians need to be from the community too. In order to be a politician, they need to start providing where they live at. And let the people from the community say you live around there, not you. You know? Because just because you got an address, there's politicians in the Bronx that their address is a room. A room, in a room in house, like a regular, you don't live there, man. You don't live there, you know? You do not live there. I'm standing there and watching. I see the character or the people that's going in and out there. And I know you don't live there, but that's the address. They can just put any address, you know? They probably live in Jersey, probably live in Long Island, but they do not live in the Bronx, you know? and. So many things need to be not even corrected. They just need to be going by the law and going by what they wrote out to be. And they got to follow their own laws and their own traditions and their own codes and they they got they own they got their own oaths. They got to live up to them, man. You know? They make sure they make sure everybody else live up to their oath. But the people that's taking everybody down is the ones that ain't living up to their oath. But you can lock somebody up for committing a crime. But you commit crimes all day long, every day. You know? That's all I really got to say on that. 